Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up and to the last of our 12 days of Switch Up videos. We hope you've enjoyed them. I'm just going to quickly go over that big competition to win two Switch OLEDs as it is the very last time that you can enter. How do you enter? Well, you just leave normal comments down below. Um, whichever comment you want to make really about the games that we chat about or whatever you want to say about the 12 days of Switch Up. And also we have our website www.switchup.gg where you can save 10% and again that 10% finishes today. If you want to buy your eShop vouchers or your Xbox or PlayStation, you can get it all on there using code SWITCHUP. But today is the last day for those savings. Lovely. Right, as you said then Mark, today is the last of our 12 days of Switch Up videos. Yesterday of course we had our subscribers best 10 games of 2021 and to end this series we're going today look at our 10 best five each five of marks and five of mine now the same rules apply to us as apply to everybody else as long as the game came out this year then it's fair game and you'll see some of our honorable mentions playing on the screen as i speak exactly right now these won't be the highest scores on the channel these will be our personal preferences and scores are separate to that we try and be completely unbiased when we're reviewing games so potentially they're not all going to be top scoring games absolutely okay so what are our 10 best for the year of 2021 well let's find out okay i'm going to pass over to mark for his fifth favorite game of 2021 and mark you have gone for dying light dying light well there you go this one we spoke a little bit about yesterday and it has almost sentimental value to me in terms of gaming because I plumbed so many hours back on the other platforms that this was released and it was one of the first games that got me involved in a, a small group of online mates um, doing right. online co-op you know mm -hmm. um, and, and it was just such a lovely time I believe it was back on the Xbox actually um, yeah I think it was Xbox and it just it created that community feeling that I hadn't experienced since well, to be honest, since I was a kid doing um, disc swapping on Command & Conquer on the PlayStation, <laughs> if there's people in the audience that know what that was, man, you used to get a biro and keep the lid open and you could swap the discs so you only had to have one copy of a game. Ah, <laughs> oh, good times. But Dying Light, yeah, open world, zombie survival, um, first person shooter, parkour, all the good stuff. But for me, it's all about that co-op online. Um, and that's, you know, even the small amount we played, Glenn, you can see how glorious that can be. Yeah, it's, it's definitely one of those games that um, you could really get into, couldn't you? It could really become like a staple multiplayer game that you return to every night, every other night with a few friends. Absolutely. And although I am very much looking forward to the sequel, I'm a bit disappointed we're only getting a cloud version on Switch. Yeah, yeah, that is a shame. That is a shame. Yeah, so that's me for Dying Light. Lovely. Right, well, my fifth placed game for the year... Um, one that I would never have expected to be on this list had you had told me about it back in uh, back in January. This is Plants vs Zombies: Battle for Neighborville. Now this came out elsewhere uh, originally, and the only Plants vs Zombies game I'd ever played was the first one. You know, which was a very different sort of game, wasn't it? It was almost like a, a tower defense game, which I loved, absolutely loved it. And um, when I saw these come out back back when they first come out, I mean, I kind of looked at them and thought, oh, you know, that's that's quite fun, but it's it's not. It's not what I expect Plants vs. Zombies to be, so I, I just passed them by. And then, of course, you reviewed this one for us, and, um, you know, it, it intrigued me, but it wasn't until it just it had, a, like, a flash sale on Amazon one day and just dropped a dirt cheap, and I thought, oh, go on then, I'll pick it up. And I played it, and it is just so much fun. Like, you're talking about um, co-op experiences with, with Dying Light. Well, back when this came out, I think, again, I think it was around March time, give or take, we put a lot of time into this one, didn't we? Yeah, this is a great one with mates, isn't it? You can yeah. obviously gradually build up your arsenal as well. So you've got your group of zombies or plants and there's certain unlocks that you get. So there is there is a bit of that element of upgrading cosmetics as well as abilities, but without all the, you know, the free-to-play nonsense, you can sometimes get attached to that. It's yeah. very good, actually, isn't it? Solid shooting mechanics as well. Yeah, it's just... I, I just didn't expect it to be as good as it is, you know, so it's, it's obviously your third person shooter, you know, uh, team team match, as Mark said, you play as your, your plants or your zombies, I always find plants easier, I don't know if I'm just better with some of the plant characters, but 
Whenever I get put into the zombie team, it's like, oh no, I'm going to get caned. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you're a vegetarian, Glenn. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, there you go. It's you the just affinity. worked it out for me. Yeah, <laughs> veggie power, winning the day. <laughs> but no, this was this was a great time. I really enjoyed this, and it's nice when you have one of these games that just pop out and you know pop out of nowhere and make it onto your game of the year list at the end. It's it's nice to have that sometimes. Yeah, no, it's very good. There's also quite a bit of co-op in the an air quote single player part isn't there where you can go into the town yes yes actually the single player was again much better than I thought it was going to be you know I, I spent yeah. a lot more time in that than I had any right to and uh, yeah just for the <laughs> price I paid for it as well man like, well worth it yeah same <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah um, right moving on so fourth place for you Mark you have gone for Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic just to uh, just to really emphasise what I said about it doesn't matter when it was first released you've picked a game as old as time oh man what a game <laughs> what a game this is this yeah this is it's funny isn't it sometimes you go back to old games and they don't have the same impact right yeah. I think you'd agree with that oh 100% yeah yeah but this does this does this is but you know this was Bioware at their best this was storytelling done at its best and I, and to be honest, another thing I was a bit worried about was Aspire. Like, I know they're doing the, the remake, but their work on the last Star Wars game was a little bit iffy. Mm-hmm. So I was a bit worried about that. And But no, it ports across amazingly. I know there'll be people saying, oh, <laughs> great, you know, you've got a game from 2003 that runs well on Switch. <laughs> but it isn't always the case, yeah. as we know. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's lovely. You've got a choice as well. Go light, go dark. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, amazing. I love this game so much. I actually want to go and play it now. Yeah, I'm off, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> were you a big fan? I take, I'm pretty sure you were, but you, I take it you played a lot of this back in the day, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I've, I've played through this on probably three different systems now. Right, okay, okay. Yeah, I had the mobile ports that came out, played through those. Um, it was just as good then. <laughs> when the Switch code was coming in, I was like, this, come on, throw this at me. Yeah, and, uh, it was yeah. Just uh, but the, do you know what the thing is though? Those three playthroughs, very different decisions made, very different outcomes. So I'm all about that. Yeah, it's, um, as you say there, because obviously there'd been a few Star Wars games already, hadn't there before this on the Switch? This was the one I, I've never. I played little, little bits of it, but you know I'm I'm not as big a fan um, as other people. You know the, the Star Wars franchise has never hugely grabbed me, but. This was the one I was thinking. I wonder if I wonder if we will get that because I knew it would be the one that so many people would want, and uh, it was nice when it was, you know, was finally announced. And and there are some yeah, some ni- nice little collection of Star Wars games on the Switch now, aren't there? There are, yeah. And personally, I mean, they're all good. I like the the Jedi Knight games. Um, mm. I really like those. But I do feel like this has aged better because its core mechanics don't rely on visuals. Yes. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, we just need the sequel, which I'm sure will come. It's, it's, it's going to happen. You would think so, wouldn't you now? Yeah. Right, my fourth place for 2021 then is Shin Megami Tensei 5. I'll be honest, when I reviewed this uh, a few months ago now, I did imagine this being a couple of places higher by the end of the year, but certain things have happened since then that, uh, that have meant that it's ended up in fourth place. But these five games I've picked, as far as I'm concerned, are absolute creme de la creme you know so they're all fantastic <laughs> games now this one so obviously very traditional jrpg in many respects but as we mentioned in yesterday's video in the subscribers pick the difference is that very interesting mechanic in this series of almost cherry picking your own team by negotiating with the monsters and the demons that you find but then you have the fusion system where you can fuse monsters together to create new monsters as well it's just really a really interesting um, system where you fight a boss, say for example, get absolutely trounced, and then think to yourself, right, what what do I do from here? And rather than the answer be spend five hours grinding, it's well, I'm going to take this uh, element that I had a weakness to in my main character, and I'm going to use one of my um, abilities to nullify that weakness because this boss is very strong in that area, or I'm going to take these two monsters that aren't particularly strong and I'm going to create a new monster that has an element that will be useful for this boss or do you know what I mean there are just ways that you can try and strategize to to overcome a barrier and I always love that about RPGs where it's not the answer isn't just 
go and grind for ages, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yesterday you were saying about how, you know, this spawned Persona, is that right? Yes, yeah, yeah. it's a sub so, yeah. Well, I reviewed the Persona 5 Strikers, didn't I, which is a uh, Musu spin-off yes. of the Persona games. And that actually has that same mechanic still in there of, of the fusion. Is Have they taken that fusion system then across from here? I, I would say so. I, would be, I believe so. I mean, I, I haven't played much of the Persona series. I've always enjoyed this main series, the, the Shin Megami series. But the fact that it does spin off from this series, I'm assuming that obviously some of its mechanics have, have carried over. Yeah. So is it the same world or are these completely separate worlds? I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, this is where the comment yeah. section is going to come in. All I know, and I might be wrong with this, is that <laughs> I think Persona, Persona is is a lot more about like the, the the school side of it, you know. Whereas with Shin Megami, it kind of starts off with your traditional school, and then the whole world <laughs> falls apart, and you, off you go, and you know you you go on this mission and this quest. So I, I don't know what the the differences are story wise uh, and universe wise between the two uh, the two series. But I would like to know, so yeah, please, if you if you do know, please do stick it in the comment section. Yeah, that could be a winning comment right there. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. Um, right, let's move on then. So we're going to change it up a bit now. We're going to go from a, a big game that was highly anticipated for many years to a smaller indie game for your third place mark, and that's Death's Door. Death's Door. Death's Door from Devolver. That's the one. Is that right? That's the one. That's the one. With the little crow. <laughs> yeah. Glorious little crow that was. <laughs> this this is a charming little game. I mean, you said it yourself in one of our other videos. I think it might have been Hidden Gems, can't remember. Mm. But um, it has those Souls-like elements, you know, it can, which can be quite off-putting sometimes to new players. But I think Death's Door overcomes that. It's got a very good uh, learning curve, you know. It, it doesn't suddenly go vertical yeah 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 <laughs> as as could you know it can so often be the case um and there's also a good amount of exploration here without feeling like you're gonna get absolutely wrecked every five seconds yeah it's, thinking about it now it's it's a very very good game i mean i know i've said that already in other videos but it, it's it, it's the balancing of everything that makes it so good and then being able to quickly go back to that hub area which again you've seen done many times before but you always feel like you've got some more points to put into skills, so you're a bit stronger. It's just so well balanced. Yeah, I, I obviously I've not played as much of it as you. I've played about an hour and a half, two hours, but I did like the combat system felt very nice and fluid. You know, you had your roll attack and your uh, your melee and your range weapon, and it, it did lend itself quite nicely to to a nice fluid combat system, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, some people have said this is a bit like an action RPG and. Yeah, I can kind of see that, but it's one of those hybrid games. There's a lot of uh, charm and character. We were talking about the Manchester-based studio, and you can tell there's a bit of that British humour underneath yeah. You know the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so far, it's funny, you always go back, and we look through comments, you guys know, we reply to as many as we can. Mm. And there is an overwhelming love for this game, yeah. which is nice to see. Yeah, yeah, and and as we've said many times, Devolver, they just, you know, they just seem to, uh, <laughs> they've got like a, I don't know, like a sixth sense for, for picking good games to publish, haven't they? They really do hit the nail on the head so many times on the Switch, certainly. It's quite scary, isn't it? Yeah, it really is, really is. I mean, they had this and then they had, was it um, Loop Hero, was it called? Yeah, Loop, that was amazing. That was like a week later, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure that was Devolver again, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that was, yeah, that was, definitely was. And another game that just has this huge following. I think yeah. a lot of the time now, people just see Devolver and they're like, it's going to be good. And yeah. they're usually right. And they are, but that's the thing, and they are right, aren't they? It's, you know, they Devolver don't let them down. Yeah, no, good stuff, good stuff. Right, my third place then, funnily enough, was, was yesterday's first place. Uh, this is Metroid Dread. Now, when I reviewed this, as I was just saying with Shin Megami, again, I, I you know, you, your first impressions, you, you're like, yeah, no, this is right up there. And then you stop and think about it. And it did filter down a little bit, but through no fault of its own, just through the strengths of the two still to come. But in terms of this game, I mean, I've been a fan of of the Metroid uh, games since Super Metroid, really. You know, I mean, I played the first Metroid on my cousin's NES as a kid, and I didn't really know what I was doing. You know, you kind of wander around and die quite quickly. It wasn't until Super Metroid came out that 
the series really, really grabbed me. And it, it really did grab me because, um, I remember I've told this story before, but I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to tell it again. I was, um, I was in Woolworths one day with my hard earned, you know, paper round money, whatever it was. And I, I'd gone there with the intention of buying Batman Forever for the Super Nintendo. Obviously, you know, love the film, Jim Carrey, um, at his, his crazy best and all the rest of it. Uh, and I went there to buy the game and it was there, it was £50 and I was just about to buy it. And then there was this big box just next to it with like a space person fighting this huge, what looked like a big dragon. And it was a, it was a big box, bigger than the usual boxes. And I was like, man, that looks good. And it was only 20 quid. So I picked that up instead. I bought that and I bought Worms for the Game Boy instead of buying Batman Forever. And I got home and played this game, which obviously was Super Metroid, and it was just incredible. It was I couldn't, I'd never <laughs> played anything like it. It was so good. And uh, obviously, I like I've, that. yeah, I followed the, the Metroid series ever since. And this is an indirect sequel to that game. It, it follows Fusion, which itself followed Super. So it's a continuation of that storyline. And uh, in terms of its mechanics, you know, it, it introduces. The ME robots, which I fully expected, fully expected, sorry, to get fed up with, but didn't. Uh, it has really nice, tight level design. I just everything about it, it just screamed Metroid. It was it was the Metroid 2D Metroid game I've been waiting a, a long time to play. You know. Absolutely, I'm I'm still in the nostalgia of your story, and I wasn't even there. <laughs> <laughs> I bet there's a few in I'm telling you there's got to be a few listening like that's such a nostalgic I can almost feel the feeling because I, I remember going into Dixon's and picking up Tenchu Stealth Assassin exactly yeah. in the same manner getting yeah. home and being like oh my giddy aunt this is amazing and this is back when like you bought one game or right, I've just said I bought two at once but you know what I mean like you had to save up yeah. hard to get a game oh. you know it wasn't like these days where everything's on sale every five minutes and and it's funny because I remember buying Batman Forever like car only from eBay many many years later for about two pound ninety nine and playing it and what oh, a pile man. of crap that game is! <laughs> oh my, I nearly spent fifty quid on that. Dear me! Wow, goodness, that it's like the butterfly effect. If you had <laughs> bought it, you might have quit gaming and then we, this wouldn't be here. That's very true. Yeah, so there you go. It's because of Super Metroid that this channel exists. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> uh, nice. Right, let's move on. So your turn, uh, number two for you, second place. And you have plumped for Eastwood. Eastwood, yeah, nice. It was in our list yesterday, so the masses agree with me. What what number was it yesterday? Uh, off the top of my head, I believe it was fourth. Um, I don't have to do it off the top of my head because I've got it written down. What am I talking about? It was fourth, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not too different, is it? Second and fourth. That's, yeah. That's nah. not too bad. That's right. I mean, you know, this is an action-adventure RPG. Uh, it comes from a very small team, as you already all know, because you watched the video yesterday. <laughs> um, and why do I love it so much? I think, you know, going back to Glenn's comment just there, it feels like one of those games you bought as a kid. Yeah. And it, you didn't know what it was. And it, that was exactly what it was here. We knew it was a small indie team. We'd been given the press spiel. Mm. but And also you've got a bit of hype there. Personally, I had a bit of hype for this game. I'd looked at the trailer before and thought, that looks amazing. Um, but then sitting down to play it, hearing the soundtrack, you know, from composer, is it Joel Karelitz? Right. And it, it all just comes together. I love that art style. This is where people that say pixel art is bad or hand or whatever. No, 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 no. It's just about how it's implemented. Absolutely. And everything here just just worked so well. Great game. Yeah. and I mean, I, I didn't really know much about it. I remember seeing it on the, uh, the Coming Soon page and obviously seeing... Uh, Chucklefish's name attached to it albeit as publishers I believe but it although they are just publishing it kind of it had that it very much looked like one of their games do you know what I mean yeah so that was yeah, a, absolutely yeah and that was enough to get me intrigued um, but obviously I mean you reviewed it I have since bought it um, but not got round to it yet but it's nice to hear that it's as good as it looked like it should be you know yeah definitely and I do love it when they do things that couldn't be done back in the day from a visual standpoint. Yeah. So yeah. they introduce some three D lighting effects that, you know, most people might not notice, but we would notice, right? Because I think it's what we pretty much do for a living now. Yeah, yeah. And and it really makes a difference having a bit of dynamic lighting as you're moving around dark areas and stuff and shadows cast. It's it's lovely. So yeah, for me, just enjoyed it. And that's why it's my number two. Nice. 
Right, my number two has absolutely shot up the rankings in the last few days because I've picked it back up and I absolutely love it and it's Bravely Default 2. Now this uh, this came 10th yesterday um, and I'm a fan of the series. I played the first, well the first one on the 3DS and then there was a, a second game, albeit not connected, uh, also on the 3DS. Completed both of those which for me with JRPGs these days is almost unheard of. Uh, so I, I was really looking forward to this new one uh, being announced and then obviously releasing on the Switch and I haven't been let down at all. It does everything that the other games did, it does it fantastically well and uh, I'm loving every minute of this game so far. Uh, it's, again, it, similar to Shin Megami Tensei, the way that you can pick your team and you can, um, well not pick your team so much, but the way you can edit their role in your team so all of your characters your four characters base stats are actually the same and it's the jobs you give them the weapons you give them the equipment you give them but obviously then the sub jobs you give them the abilities that you pick from other jobs uh, and 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 assign to each member that really does shape each character plus with all of these games the characters are incredibly likable they really are very likable characters um, you've got one in this one called Elvis who's like a Scottish uh, character. Yeah, he's cool. He's just a lot of fun. There was one in the first game called Ring a Bell who was similar in terms of kind of that being that comic relief, but never overdoing it. Just just a few, you know, dry comments and quips here, here and there just to break things up. Handled mm. fantastically well. The only gripe I have with it, which is probably what stopped it from being number one, it was that close, was that they've they've changed the battle system, the, the encounter system, to having enemies on the screen now generally I prefer that rather than having random battles but the first yeah. game had a, an encounter slider where you could change the encounter rate so you could go from absolutely zero you, you wouldn't get any to 100% if you wanted to grind and that was a fantastic right. system and they've they've changed it to a you know a, a visible enemies on the screen which in, in theory should work but in practice you always have those times where you can't get past an enemy even if you want to and that always irritates me you know absolutely I mean how many games have we reviewed recently with variations of what you've just said yeah and the fact that they had the system so perfect in the first game and have changed it lets it down but uh, I mean that is a minor gripe but it's gripe enough to stop it from <laughs> taking my, my top spot yeah nice right so you're number one then let's, let's start with you of drum course drum roll yep and you have gone for Disco Elysium yes now this, of course I have yeah this ties in very nicely to what you said at the start Mark of the games we pick won't necessarily correlate to the scores we gave and I think it's mm -hmm. very important to stress that before I shush and let you talk about your game but because as you said a game can fall down on certain components you know performance can be poor or the graphics can be a bit shoddy but whilst we would mention that in a review that doesn't necessarily change how much we enjoy it personally you know absolutely yeah i'd be really interested this would be a good time for anyone in the comments to put down their game that they know full well has issues but they still absolutely love it yeah, um, yeah. and for me it's disco elysium I, i'm a big you know i read well, i don't get to read nearly as much as i used to but i used to absolutely love reading novels learning new things and Disco Elysium is one of the few games I've played recently where I felt like I've learned more from playing it you know I've actually I've actually gained something yeah. other than just enjoyment which <laughs> is it feels important actually it feels important because it's it's something as you get older you 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 do you you learn less yeah yeah <laughs> it, it's just it's true um as a kid you take for granted the fact you're constantly learning new things and this this is so well delivered you know, you've got the different parts of your psyche which constantly comment on everything you do. So you come to a confrontation and you'll have one part of the brain making its observation. Then you'll have the aggressive part making its observation. <laughs> and you have to, you know, you have to listen to these and then make your own choice based on them. <laughs> and it's amazing. And there's like a point in the game where you suddenly realize that some of them are bias. Like it never explains that before. Oh, okay. And suddenly, yeah, suddenly there's this moment where there's a really attractive lady and everything they've been saying has been a biased response based on the fact that you fancy her. Oh, okay. But, but pre yeah, previous to this, it was always just a logical, you know, it was do it was in your best interest. Yeah, yeah. But you you suddenly realise actually you were being played, and that's <laughs> how it's represented to the player. I mean, how clever is that? That's very clever. Yeah, very clever. 
So yeah, I would I'd strongly recommend if the, when the physical comes for this one that you pick this up. Yeah, um, I'm hoping they'll do a more standard release because at the minute it's only had a a very expensive collector's edition. But hopefully it'll be one that's that's picked up by somebody and uh, you know gets a more widespread release. Because uh, yeah, I definitely would like to play it. Sounds it just sounds so intriguing. Mm. And you know what? This is a developer who wouldn't have released earlier, I think because they knew the performance wasn't right. This is one that would make sure it's working perfectly before they even think about getting it onto a disc. Yeah. Or a cart, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully it will it will get just that because uh yeah, it'd be, it'd be a shame for this one not to uh reach the masses, so to speak, wouldn't oh, it? Oh. It absolutely would. This has been the highlight for me gaming-wise of my year. Like it's a rare it's a rare thing and weirdly in a weird comparison but but almost nothing like it but i used to be hugely into my point and click adventure games yeah and this reminds me of when i picked up from i think it was like a bargain bucket but i got the blade runner point and click game oh yeah yeah and yeah. i remember yeah booting this booting it up it very familiar feels like you've just discovered an absolute gem yeah yeah no, i'm nice. looking forward to what your number one is now well mine um <laughs> Probably no surprise to anyone that's watched the channel. My number one is Monster Hunter Rise. Yeah. Now, <laughs> as I, I mean, we mentioned this yesterday in, in the subscribers pick where this also did very well. I've been a huge fan of Monster Hunter for a, a long time now, but it it was a game that took a long time to get into. Now, again, I'm going to mm -hmm. just tell you a little story because um, I, the first one I played, I mean, I played a couple on the uh, the PSP, but the first one I picked up and I was like, no, I'm going to get into this. Like uh, This series, I, I know I'm going to like it, but I, I just can't break through, you know? And um, yeah. it was Monster Hunter Try on the Wii. And I bought that one, bought Special Edition when it came out, came with a control pad and all that. And I couldn't get into it. And I was like, I know I like the series. <laughs> I know I'm going to like it. I just don't understand it well enough, you know? And um, yeah. so I bought Monster Hunter Free Ultimate for the 3DS. And again, I, I got on a bit better, but I just struggled with it again. There was an underwater fight because that one had underwater battles and I just really struggled with the, the 3DS version to do it. So I was like, no, sod it, I, I'm, I'm going to do it. So I bought the <laughs> Wii U version as well. I bought, I bought the same game twice. That was so determined to get into the series. <laughs> Played it on the big screen with a proper controller, beat that monster and then it clicked. It, that's, that's what it took. Nice. And then obviously bought four Ultimate and then I introduced you to the series and we started playing um, multiplayer and from there it was just, you know, all one way. To see this entry uh, where they've taken some of the mechanics from World on the PS4 and updated the series, but done it in a way that's very respectful to long-term fans, making it accessible to, to newcomers, um, which is, you know, vitally important. And, and people, you know, it's so important to realise that for any series that you like, if you want it to stay around, newcomers have to <laughs> be welcomed. Otherwise, it's going to die off, you know? And um, it's nice to see that they've they've done it in a way that still makes it a fantastic game, but hopefully means it's going to stay around for a long time to come. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, this, as we've said a few times on the channel, if Monster Hunter didn't exist, this channel probably wouldn't exist. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy, right? Yeah, I mean, we joked about Metroid earlier, but this is, yeah, you're actually, this is true this time. Like, we, yeah. we used to sit about on a Friday night playing Monster Hunter on, on the 3DS, ordering a pizza and whatnot and it was from from that that the channel kind of stemmed you know the the thoughts of you know we could we could do this we could talk to people about what these conversations we're having now just me and you we could we could take mm -hmm. this out and, and you know see if people want to listen to us and, and whatnot and it, yeah it came from friday night sessions playing monster hunter 4 ultimate <laughs> and eating loads of pizza and eating loads and loads of pizza yeah <laughs> There you go. What a perfect, perfect end, fitting end, I'd say, to this series. Yeah, I would say so. I would say so. Um, yeah, it's nice. It's interesting, isn't it, to see the difference between the games that came out this year and, and obviously last year. I mean, my number one last year was Streets of Rage 4, and I think yours was, I think it was Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Um, Good game. If memory serves me right. And obviously you've gone for Disco Elysium this time. So, yeah, some some cracking games over the last couple of years, haven't there? Yeah, definitely. And it's funny, isn't it? Because you still see comments of people saying, oh, there have been no good games come out. And you're like, what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> you nah, sure? They, they really have. They really have. Um, well, uh, all's left to say really is a huge thank you to anyone that's watched, you know, even a couple of minutes of any of these 12 days of Switch Up videos. They have been a lot of fun 
to make. Um, they have been very different in style in terms of this kind of podcasty uh, way of doing it. If it is something you do like, please do let us know and maybe we can incorporate it into the future, not on such a regular basis, but it could be a, something that we uh, do every so often, couldn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's been it's been great fun making them. I mean, it's 20 past 12, just for your reference. <laughs> it's 20 past 12 in the morning now, and we are pretty much shattered. We, we, I'm, pretty, I'm feeling pretty stoked to have got this thing finally wrapped up, honestly. It's been great fun, but man, has it been tiring. Yeah, it's been tiring. Uh, oh, hasn't it? Shall I do the sign-off? Yeah, go for it, mate. Oh, I know you're looking forward to this, Glenn. <laughs> I can almost feel your excitement. Well, it's the last one of the year, so go on, I'll let you have it. I'll just take my headphones out before you do it so I don't like... No, 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 no. Don't perforate no, no. my eardrums. You, you're going to join in on this one, no, aren't you? No, I'm bloody not. Maybe... Um, All right. 2022 maybe in 2022 yeah we'll see we'll see <laughs> all right all right all right well first things first just remember this is now your last moment to to participate in the giveaway so leave those comments hit buttons and bells and whistles and stuff <laughs> and if you want to buy some eShop credit on our website then crack on 10 percent discount using code switch up Thanks to our patrons. You guys are amazing. I know we've even had a few new ones this week. I am feeling pretty delirious right now. I'm so tired. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Have I even got the voice for this? Let's try. Let's do this. Here we go. Let's find out. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!